I've started really getting into my power carving and I want to do more uh, practice pieces basically so that I get better with it for when I want to use it in other projects. I did this uh, candle holder, tea light holder, just as a practice piece, as a spirally piece, and it's come out pretty nice. I wish I had started with a square piece of wood, it would have made it a tad bit easier. So I thought I'd redo it out of some red gum uh, and show you the whole process. So this is about 110 by 110 mil square, uh, and let's see, it is about 185 millimeters long from corner to, and it is square, I've jointed and thicknessed it. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but it does make it easier. So, draw a line from corner to corner on all four sides, and then that represents the space in here that we want to carve away with the turbo plane to give us that spiral look. However, before we start the power carving, I found the center point and I'm going to drill that out for a tea light candle. Um, it's more an excuse to have the spiral inside the house rather than a good candle holder, but still good to do before we start. Uh, and a standard tea light candle is about 36 or 7 millimeters, so I'm going to use a 40 millimeter force and a bit to drill down, I don't know, 5, 10 mil. I'd highly recommend something like the Triton Super Jaws or these knockoffs of them. They hold the workpiece very securely and can be operated with one hand and one foot so you don't have to let go of the grinder. Alternatively, something like a Workmate will also be pretty good. To start off with, just skim away some of the crown points in the middle, then start to make your way towards the drawn lines. This lets us define the edges so we know where to stop. Basically the idea is to carve away everything except the pencil lines. I find it easiest to do a little bit per flute and rotate to the next flute trying to keep them as symmetrically carved as possible. With the edges defined on all four flutes, I can come back and mark all the high points I want to remove. Primarily this is going to be in the very middle of the piece, so starting at the middle I can roll the tool back along the general flute shape to get a nice smooth twist. I found later on it was easier for me to stay on the same side and flip the workpiece end for end than for me to dance around the super jaws. That meant more of a muscle memory of all the shapes tended to kick in. With the shaping done, it's time to sand. I'm using Arbitex Contour Sander, which is new to me. This isn't just a sanding pad on the end of a stick, it's more like an orbital sander. You can see that the sanding pad is decoupled from the shaft, which makes this great for finishing, but probably not as good for coarse shaping. Though it's different than normal, the process is still the same as if you're sanding with anything else. Start with coarse grit, in this case 80 grit, and work your way up through all the steps in grits. The only difference is that the dust doesn't actually go flying, so it's worth using a blower, compressed air, or a vacuum between each grit to remove the dust. You ought to be sanding the wood, not sanding the dust. Though I said it isn't great for core shaping, it is able to get all the tool marks out. The discs on the contour sander are adhesive backed. Switching out isn't too hard, though I'm not 100% sold on this system. They do have an alternative heavy duty system that screws in, but it hasn't arrived yet. I continued through to 240 grit. I finished with a coat of tongue oil, and though it pains me to say it, I think a higher gloss might actually look good on something like this. So I ended up putting a coat of shellac on just to give it that little bit of shine. I think high gloss would work pretty good on this, but I'm kind of preferring satin or semi-gloss. Quite happy with how it's turned out though. I think next time if I was to do another one, I'd make it a little bit skinnier to start off with. You can see that the uh, spirals on this one are probably a bit more proportionate than 
on this red gum one. It's a fun little project. Uh, didn't end up taking much time, but it's a really good introduction to learning how the various Arbor Tech tools work. Uh, and you get a pretty result out of it. It looks much better in person than on photos. In video, it's actually not too bad because you can see the way that it spirals around. Probably won't ever light the candle in it, but it does give me an excuse to have it inside that uh, Natalie won't complain too much about. This is actually just a rehash of an Arbitech project. Uh, I was just trying to explain a few more details on what their video does. I'll have a link to that as well if you want to give it a shot. Thanks for watching.